I recently visited an incredible koi pond and garden. Little did I know, the owner of these fish had a big surprise waiting for me. Well, good morning. It's time to go and feed Frank's fish. I actually stayed at his house last night so we could get a slightly earlier start because today's gonna be an excite. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> anyway, today I'll be showing you uh, Frank's koi pond. So I actually arrived up here uh, last night. Frank sorted us out with some amazing pizzas. So Good to see a Papa John's. Yeah, and we had a lovely evening sat by the pond. I actually came up to see Frank because he's a bit like me in a sense that he does uh, YouTube videos. Uh, his channel is all about koi and it's very originally named the Koi Channel. <laughs> How long did it take you to think of that one? Uh, I actually thought of it, then I thought someone surely got that name. Yeah. And I think because it's such an obvious name, no one's tried to go for it. <laughs> but yeah, um, Frank does videos on uh, the Koi channel, and well, I started watching them pretty much when your first one went out, to be Christmas, honest. Christmas, wasn't Yeah, it? that first video went out, and I thought, oh, this is cool. And as soon as you revealed this pond in one of your films, as soon as you showed your, you know, like the, 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 yeah. the story, the journey that you've been on with this particular pond, I was like, I really want to go and see this pond. I want to see it, you know, in the flesh. In the flesh? It hasn't got any flesh. What are you giving them? Paste. It's actually a recipe that someone I know got from one of the breeders in Japan. And then he makes it up for me. It just helps with the conditioning of the fish. But your fish love it. Yeah. And they'll take it straight out of your hand. Oh, you missed it. You completely missed it. There you go. Now, if you think these fish are big, you'll be mind blown by what Frank showed me in the afternoon. But we'll get onto that later in the video. Do they have names? Have you named all of your fish or not? Yeah. You have? So this is Big Chag. Because it's Chagoy. Yeah. And it's big. Yeah. The big gold one's called JD after a friend that we lost. She was ginger and she was vibrant, so we named the fish after JD because we thought she, uh, the name suited. I've often thought that fish are quite overlooked as pets, as you can't stroke or cuddle them without getting wet. That said, it was beautiful to see these majestic creatures interacting with their owner. And then some are just named by their, their the name, the variety, like Achiba. Yeah. See, I'm still learning all of the different Japanese, you know, variety names. Yeah. But I know that that one is the Yamabuki Ogon. Yeah. The, a big yellow, shiny creature. Is it like kids where you're not allowed to have a favorite? Or? Yeah, sort of but I bet you do have a favourite. There's always going to be one that you'd miss the most and it's got to be the big one. Yeah. How, like, uh, how big is it now? It's, it's about 92 oh. centimetres, that one. To carry it and move it from the pond is a, is a task. It's yeah. a two person job. Imagine having a pet so big and heavy, <laughs> you need someone else to help you carry it. Then again, because it's a fish, you don't have to do much carrying, I suppose. No. And then also in here is an Achiba. I haven't seen one of those uh, in person until now, I think. And I, I might have seen one of them in Japan. Basically, when I was out in Japan, that's what kick-started my interest in koi. I was kind of curious about them since I was young, but going to Japan and seeing where these fish are bred just blew my mind. And yeah, because I enjoyed that so much, really got into the koi thing. And uh, more recently, I've been able to meet people like Frank here and visit some amazing ponds. Oh, they love the pellets. It's like watching one of those really satisfying cleaning videos. You like that? Right, they've probably eaten enough food now. Yeah, I think so. Where are your filters? Because there's one over there. I see that, big shower. The rest are in the bunker. The bunker? 
Hey, the trap door has been lifted. What's going on down here? The short version or the long version? <laughs> the simple version. Yeah, for people like me, what's happening down here? There is a, a bottom drain, which is a four inch pipe. That feeds from the center of the pond and then that pipe comes into what is called a drum filter and it comes through the drum which takes out any debris some of the water goes through this biological section that's basically got a lot of bacteria on it then all of the water is being pumped up into this shower then there's two pumps and then they feed the water up and over the shower and you just got loads of biological media inside yeah, each so layer a lot of bacteria can live on the media and it's those bacteria that are they, consuming ammonia and stuff yeah your ammonia and your nitrate wow and nitrite cool what is that noise chopper the neighbors don't realize we're filming and then does the water go to that really nice little um, blade, like waterfall? Yep, so it goes under the ground and then through and out the blade. And then across here, we've got what's called a surface skimmer, like what you would see on a swimming pool. And any debris that sits on the surface gets pulled down into the skimmer. If only your fish could know the amount of effort that you go yeah, to to keep, keep them happy. They would probably grow faster. <laughs> And did you do all the work on this yourself? Like these, the, the, the woodwork and the boards and everything? Yeah, so I did all the, all the wood. My cousin did all of the landscaping for us. The slabs were all from a job that he had canceled, so it was perfect, really. As far as ponds go, this is right up there with one of the best that I've seen. <laughs> Hello. Um. So they get fed at the moment, 10 times a day. 10? Yeah, 10 times a day. Oh, my fish is lucky if I go out in the garden a couple of times. But they're on about 10 times a day. This is a, a sinking pellet. Oh, crumbs. Hey. So I'm turning that back off because you fed too much food. <laughs> Frank mentioned that we should visit a nearby koi dealer where we might be able to film some very high quality fish. Maybe this was a clue to the surprise that he had in store. I think this pond is a credit to Frank for his commitment, for his uh, enthusiasm, and for his just determination to make something really good and make it perfect. We had a quick bite to eat before heading off to Quenny Koi. So this is probably going to be one of the biggest koi shops that I've ever visited, I think. <laughs> this is the thing that you don't see on YouTube videos. The time that it takes faffing around with your cameras to get them set up properly. It is one of the drawbacks of filming everything that you get up to. You spend more time faffing with your camera than you do actually doing the thing that you came out to film. But it's all worth it. Right. Oh, wow. It is quite big, isn't it? Now, if we were on a date, I'd say, do you come here often? Yeah. But, but do you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, somehow, Frank has organised for us to get up close and personal with the biggest fish, I think, in the main pond here. So the guys have got some rather large bowls, if you can call them bowls, they're like square bowls. And we're going to try, with the net, to get the big one out. It almost didn't fit inside that bag, you know. Oh, that's gonna be heavy. <laughs> now I know what the muscles are for. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> a big old lump. We did have them a lot bigger as well. Did you? Which, uh, bigger than this? Yeah. It wouldn't have fit in the bowl. <laughs> yeah, this. It was. 
103 Yeah, the, the, the one that went a few months ago was 103 centimeters. Oh, someone bought it? Yeah. I hope they had a big pond. <laughs> jumbo, jumbo koi is really a, almost a relative term. You know, you... It depends where it is and what variety it is. Yeah, because I mean, for, for, I mean, for, you know, single colored fish, nine, 90 and above is a, a lovely size, don't get me wrong, but there'll be a hand, you know, quite a few up and down the country of this kind of size. Mm. But to get it over the meter, that is like... That's next level, that's rare. That's, yeah, that's rare. Okay. Yeah, really rare. E even regardless of what variety, it's just koi in general. Yeah. Or even carp in general. Yeah, I'd you catch say. well. If I catch one when I'm fishing, and it's a meter long. Then <laughs> you know about I'm it. I'm quite happy. <laughs> yeah, that's the result. Yeah, yeah 92. But this year, more, I think, I, I, I think the fish will struggle to get to a meter, just because it's, it's eight years old now. So it's growing as it will still grow a little bit more, but but the body on it is huge. <laughs> So casual. It looks like you've done that a few times, actually. <laughs> a few times. <laughs> the other fish we get to see close up was a giant Makashi Ogon. This fish was super impressive and I really liked it. Frank said that this was a clue for the surprise which was to follow. Oh, the scales on this one are mad. Mm. What she goes. Well, are we all ready? Are you ready? I think so. It's the big reveal. In this bowl were 15 baby koi, all of the same variety as the big one that we'd just seen. Mike from Kweni Koi explained that our challenge was to select the very best fish from this bowl for him to grow on. Okay, but yeah. What I'll do with it, put it in that pond, let it grow over winter, maybe get it up to like I don't know, like that or something. Oh wow. And then you can come back and film it and see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then with the actual fish, mm -hmm. you can have it for yourself, for your pond. Don't do this to me. Oh my yeah. God, oh my God. You didn't tell me about this. What's up? <laughs> Wait, don't pretend you didn't know. Oh, just come to Quenny Koi. Yeah, just, just come and visit. Hmm. I was quite excited as I'm in the process of planning a big new pond in my garden and later on this year I'd be on the lookout for some new fish for the pond anyway. With choosing one today, uh, you're looking for one with like, the body shape and good skin quality? Yeah, so I think, so first and foremost, if there's probably anything wrong with maybe body. Colour color preference at this stage, I wouldn't I wouldn't take too much into consideration because they, they can change a lot. Okay. So yes, yeah, let's start off with any fish that maybe have um, an imperfection in the fin. Picking a healthy fish with potential is important if you want to spend your money wisely and end up with a large and good looking koi. What do you reckon? Keep or bin? <laughs> I prefer that one over that okay. one. Okay, I Definitely. think I know where this is going to end up. <laughs> <laughs> you spotted it happening already. <laughs> so effectively, these are the three, our three number, well, your three, our top three best Makashi Ogons. So now we can start to get really picky. At this stage, we eliminated another fish as I wasn't so keen on the pattern on its head. But I still like you. Still a nice fish. I'm not being rude to you. <laughs> Now we've got down to my favourite, a fish with a funny little yellow spot on its head. Aside from that, it was perfect in every way. I mean, you can put it in the pond if you want. Okay, with the sock no, or by no. hand? Sock to you. I'm by gonna, hand? I, I don't want to walk from here all the way over. Oh, no, no, we'll, oh. <laughs> we'll I, trolley them over. <laughs> okay. Mike had also chosen one to grow on, and whilst he'll sell the other 13 fish, these two will be kept back and grown on in the big pond until we see them again. Got any jobs going? <laughs> Click subscribe to make sure you don't miss the upcoming pond build videos. I'm also very much looking forward to picking up my Makashi Ogon, which will probably be twice as big when we see it on the channel next. See ya.